Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So today I'm going to be talking about Bout of Books and the Women in Translation readathons that are happening. Um, so Bout of Books is one I always like to participate in when I can and that is a week-long readathon where there are no goals or anything along those lines. You just make up your own goals and you try to read as much as you can over the course of a week. This one runs from August 20th through August 26th. I will have a link down below to the Bout of Books website so you can sign up yourself as well as like just get more information. And then the Women in Translation Readathon is hosted by Matthew Sharapa, someone else who I cannot remember right now. Starts with a K. I'm literally blanking. I probably should have written down details. Anyways, uh, this is basically a week-long readathon to encourage people to read Women in Translation. August is Women in Translation month and so they just want to encourage people to read Women in Translation which I'm very much here for. And so my goal with both of these readathons is one to read books off of my own TBR because uh, while reading the Three Musketeers I haven't been reading much outside of that and then when I am I tend to be picking up library books so my TBR is growing and I haven't been reading any of those books. And then with the Women in Translation readathon they provided prompts and so I'm going to be trying to fulfill those prompts as well. But yes, number one priority is to read as many books as possible off of my physical TBR. So obviously I'm going to have to keep reading The Three Musketeers during those two weeks. So this will be a continual thing. What I'm hoping for is that I will get like a little bit ahead of schedule so that way I'm not feeling like super, I don't want to say stressed out, but I want to be able to like continue reading this while also like reading other things as well. So we'll see what happens. Most of what has been happening for me is that I'm reading these chapters like during my lunch breaks at work when I'm able to take a proper lunch break and leave the office. And so as long as I'm doing that, I seem to be getting through my two to three chapters a day. So I'm not like super concerned about this, like taking up a lot of time outside of that. But who knows? We'll see how the rest of this book goes. But yeah, I need to keep reading this in order to finish it by the end of the month, which by the way, does not feel like an obligation because I am enjoying this book very much. So for about a books, I have this stack of four books. I don't know if four books is a lot or not, but these are all relatively short books too. So I feel like I have a good stack here that I could potentially get through. The first one is Tell Me How It Ends, an essay in 40 questions by Valeria Lucelli. So this is a relatively new release from Coffeehouse Press and Valeria Lucelli interviews these children who have been detained for trying to get into the United States. And so in the introduction of this book, she talks about how these children are asked this set of questions and how they answer those questions basically determines whether or not they're given sanctuary here in the United States. And so she sort of plays off of that and also wants to just give a voice to children who are put in this point of view. So I ended up picking this up because Coffeehouse Press did a sale where I think this was only $5 on their website. And then like the proceeds went to an organization, I believe, that helps with children who are being detained and with recent events. Um, this just feels like a really apt book to read. So yes, it's on the short side. So I feel like this will be a good one to read for the readathon. Next, I have Mama Day by Gloria Naylor. This is one that I also have as an ebook, which is part of the reason why I put it on my stack. I picked up two Gloria Naylor books relatively recently this one and Bailey's Cafe. But since I have the ebook of this one, I figured that I might as well get to this one first. And that'll be a good one for me, you know, like as I'm out and about to be able to dip in and out of since I have it on ebook form. Also, I literally know nothing about this book, but I'm assuming there's some magical realism slash fantasy elements in here. <laughs> All right, next up, I have All Summer Long by Hope Larson. This is, I think, like a middle grade-ish graphic novel. And Hope Larson has worked on Goldie Vance as well as a couple of other comic books. And so this one was sent to me by the publisher FSG. And yeah, I've heard good things about it. I heard it's supposed to be cute. It has this fun like yellowish coloring to it, I think throughout the whole thing. So yeah, middle grade coming of age story about like these two best friends, one of whom is a girl, one of whom is a guy. And the guy like goes away to camp. And then when he returns, things are different. And also while he's away at camp, the girl ends up becoming friends with his sister or something along those lines. So yeah, I think it's about like growing up and the changes that happens with friendships and whatnot. All right. And the final one that I have is Francesca Ramsey's Well, That Escalated Quickly. This is her memoir. And I watch Francesca Ramsey for a significant amount of time, like on her own channel. Um, and obviously now she is a very big deal. She's written for a number of TV shows and I think she's developing her own TV show now. Um, and obviously this is her memoir. This was also sent to me by the publisher, but I accepted it because 
like I actually like her as like a YouTuber and whatnot. So yeah, this one again is relatively short. So I feel like this would be a good one to get through this week. And also if I can find the audiobook of it, I might pick it up just because she might narrate it herself. I've done no research on this, so she may not. And then if for some like crazy reason I get through more than that during the week, I'll just pull random things off my TBR because there's so many things on my TBR right now. All right, and now for the Women in Translation readathon, I will have a link down below to uh, the videos that you will want to pay attention to that have like the prompts and TBR recommendations and things like that. And I also did write down at least the prompts so that way I knew which of these books went with which prompts. So yes, I'm slightly organized for this video. So the first prompt is to read something that is not a novel and so this could be an essay collection, uh, this could be short stories, um, they even say things like you can read like an online article even. And so I'm going for a graphic novel and that is Aya Love in Yap City by Marjorie Oboe. This was originally published in French and I read the first bind up volume of this maybe back in like 2014 or 2015, something along those lines. And then I never picked up the second volume because I never saw like this bind up version of it. Like this bind up I think is a combination of like two or three normal volumes of this comic. And then when I was in Montreal recently I went to the Drowning Quarterly store like that comic book publisher has their own store in Montreal and it's fantastic and I highly recommend it. So yeah since I was at Drowning Quarterly I saw this and picked it up because this is published by Drowning Quarterly. I should probably clarify that. So yes anyways this is translated from the French and again it's been a number of years since I read the first volume of this but it takes place on the Ivory Coast and it's just like a fun story following this group of friends. This is Aya obviously and I might try to like quickly read the first volume in this so I can get up to speed with what was happening and who was who and whatnot. I knew there was some like relationship drama happening in the first one so yeah I feel like I need to read up on that before jumping into this one but I'm probably going to read this one during that week. All right next is to read a book about childhood and again this is meant to be whatever you want it to be. Um, so for this one I'm reading Can You Hear Me by Elena Varve Ve Velo? Wow, that was really hard for me to say. Um, and this was translated by Alex Valente. This was originally published, I believe, in Italian. And this is an art copy, as you can tell. And it's funny because on the back they have like the classification for a genre and it li literally says fiction slash coming of age. So that works out well. So you're following this girl named Aaliyah who is about 16 years old. She's living in Northern Italy, Italy and then something happens to her. The way that it, the back of the blurb is written, I'm thinking that she gets pregnant, but they don't say that explicitly. And then also at the same time, Aaliyah's father is like, go and some things go down. So yeah, this book is supposed to be like really dark and a lot of the blurbs on here describe this as being like claustrophobic. Um, so yeah, this will be a really interesting read and I'm very intrigued to see how it turns out. All right. And then the next prompt is to read a book in a language that you've like never read before or that's been translated into English from a language that you've never read before. And so for this one I'm doing Soviet Milk by Nora Ixtena and this was translated by Margita Galidis. Hmm, probably messed that up. Um, so this was translated from Latvian and I've never read anything from Latvia in general. And I've also heard really, really good things about this one. So I'm very excited to pick this one up. All right. And then the final prompt that they have is to read a book with red on the cover. Now, obviously, Soviet Milk works for this because there's a lot of red on here. So if I wanted to double up, I could. Um, but again, I'm trying to get through as many of the books on my pile as possible. Um, so another one that I have is The Ilya Crest by Christina Revere Garza and this is translated by Sarah Booker. So this is red. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera but the text on this one is red. It's like a really deep red. And then I just got in the mail like literally right before I started recording this is Stick Together by Sophie Hennaf. I probably did that wrong and this is translated from the French by Sam Gordon. This is what seems to be like a French noir story. So yeah, I just really like this cover and obviously there's run on it as well. So yeah, that's basically what I have on my stack to read. There are a couple of like bonus prompts. One of them is to read a book by a Nobel laureate and then the other one is to read a book that was published posthumously. I don't have any books on my physical TPR that fit those bonus prompts so I'm okay totally skipping that. And then the other sort of bonus points prompt thing that they have even though like they said it's like whose line is it anyways and points don't matter is to try to read books that were translated 
by women as well. So Soviet milk counts for that one, as well as the Iliac crust. So if I read both of those, I get two non-existent bonus points. Also, I realized I never said that the translator for this one is Helg Dashner, and I can't tell by that name whether or not that's a man or a woman, so I'm not going to assume. Yeah, I just can look that up later if I want another non-existent bonus point potentially, but Yes, that, there's that. So that's everything that I have for this video. Uh, leave a comment down below letting me know if you plan on participating in Bowder Books or the Women in Translation Readathon. Um, I'm posting this TBR a little bit earlier than I usually would. Like usually I just post it like the Friday before it starts, but I kind of wanted to give a little bit more attention to the Women in Translation Readathon since it is new. And also like a lot of people when I post TBRs are always like, oh, I wish I could have participated if I had known in advance. So this is me telling you guys in advance. So hopefully you guys can participate in one of these, if not both of these. If I was going to personally give an endorsement to one over the other, it would be the Women in Translation one just because I think that's a thing that we should encourage more. And I would like to see more people reading books in translation, especially women in translation. So yes, leave a comment letting me know if you're participating or if you've read any of those books and you have any comments or opinions about them, especially if you think any of them are bad for readathons. But I mean, I think I picked pretty good ones, not to like toot my own horn or anything, but yeah, this is going off the rails. <laughs> all right. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching.